I'm, I'm a production guy in the old, or assembly guy in the old school gun production. I see those two parts are not fitting together. I whip out my file and I tune them up. But what did I do when I just tuned up that part? You don't know because you won't find out until it wears out prematurely. And the other point that Giorgio made said, forget inter interchangeability. They didn't have interchangeability when they man you manufacture the gun when you do it that way. You know, it's not even interchangeable. You need a little guy from Italy to come in and <laughs> file it again for you, right? And then you're back to the same problem. So if you want to get to the best mechanical properties and technological properties, you need to have that metallurgy has to be a very, in all modern, very modern production deals with these same issues. It's not something unique to firearms, but you have to have those qualities, and you can't do that when you're you're altering stuff with files and beating things straight with a hammer and you know whatever else you're doing. So Antonio Giorgio's brother, which is his other half in uh, in in Italy there that handles the engineering and production, does not allow a, a person to go in and alter a part that's not supposed to be altered. At that point, the engineering department needs to come find out, or the quality control department has to come find out why that part in that bin is not fitting properly. Is it in the frame? Is it in the part? Is it in the part it's supposed to touch? You know, we need to figure out that problem, and that's how the problem is solved at that point. And I, I, I tell you this story because it's, it's different. It's different than how it was done for many, many, many years. There's not, we're not the only company that does that, but there's a significant <coughs> difference in how it should be done and kind of how it's always been fudged, right? And so um, that's the, the, the technical end that uh, we go through right <coughs> to the point where even the person assembling a, uh, has a certain <laughs> subcomponents they're going to assemble of the gun. Uh, and they're responsible for monitoring that everything is perfect, but it's even timed how long um, it's even timed how long it's taking, and it's not to you know kind of bully the person into working faster. That's not the issue. Antonio in engineering wants to to monitor whether there could be a problem. Are you having a problem getting these parts together? And this is a kind of an anecdotal story about some of the things we do, but. I think it spells out kind of the, the our difference between us and companies that are 80, 90 years old, working in 80, 90, or 100 year old plants and doing these other things. Um, that separates specifically green more than uh, a lot of other factors. You know, I mean, even the Fab Arm plant today is probably 20 years old, right? Or so. So, um, when you start, one of the benefits, one of the downsides when you start for a clean sheet of paper is you have nothing, right? <laughs> the, the good side is if you can, by some miracle, make it over the hump, we've got the all new shiny stuff. So uh, you have this opportunity, that, I mean, it looks like a spaceship, uh, but um, that you have the opportunity to do it all exactly you know, state of the art in the way you want it, which is pretty cool. Um, and I mean, look look at how they stock. Just, just for any of you, a lot of you, or at least a number of you, have been over really. Look at how they inventory that just their wood in these beautiful drawers, and custom fit little. And this is for this is not for hundred thousand dollar shotguns. You know, you pull out a drawer and there's all the stock. Yeah. This is guns starting at you know three thousand something. And up. All right, so. Uh, I think when you look at that, and for you, anyone that's toured gun facilities, you can see you know the vast differences there um, in what a company would look like if you could start it from scratch today and do everything kind of in a, a modern approach. You're looking at some of the hand engraving that goes on with our guns in those those images there, but. What I would tell you is, and, and we can elaborate it on the future, we can have individual conversations about it. Um, one of our partners uh, that I believe, and I think Georgia probably feels the same, is a key is our, is our engraving company. And I'll step out on a limb and, and, and tell you that I, I firmly believe they're the world leader in uh, gun engraving, production gun engraving. So that's uh, Tega Giovanelli. They're also a big master engraver school and they're the world leader in production engraving. 
And those two go hand in hand, which I think separates them. They're master engravers, figuring out how to use technology to come up with a beautiful result. And that's what separates them. You see this flat engraving on guns and, you know, this is not part, part of usually a lot of you. You're not going to find this in long range rifles, for example, but this is a big part of our business, right? And, and, and how we adorn the, the product with uh, um, engraving. And, and uh, we use, they have the same kind of approach that we do to production. They're very, they're passionate about, super passionate about what they do because they're all hand engravers. You know, this is not a company that engraves eyeglasses and will engrave a gun for a cheaper price for you. And that happens. That's actually a little more accurate than you probably think. <laughs> but um, these are passionate and hand engravers. And so they've pioneered all these interesting uh, processes. And not just interesting processes, but combination of processes. So if I were to hand engrave a subject, and I were to do it in, in precious metal or whatever it is, or I was going to do Bellino engraving, or I was going to do deep floral uh, scroll, they know what that needs to look like, and they have all this technology of these different techniques to get to that without hand engraving. Or maybe you use a combination. In that case, you were looking at, uh, there was a combination of some hand engraving that would go into it. Because that was the best way to get to the perfect result at the end of the day. The vast majority of the gun is not hand engraved. What it, it, what, I'm sorry, what it, and what that does for you is it makes it more accessible vastly than any other time in the past, right? So if you take many of our engraving patterns and you try that stereo Cortini that Amanda was just talking there, you try to, that Invictus 3 that they showed there, that stereo, that's an Invictus 3, that engraving pattern would clearly cost more than the whole gun. And I'm not even talking about having a master do it. I'm talking about having a good, competent engraver. Could it end up costing more than the gun? So, in essence, you know, we are we're taking that six-cylinder, 140 horsepower Mustang and, and giving you the free, free 500 horsepower motor, in, right? And so what it's done is it, it's brought down the cost of, of that significantly for people. And Dario, the, the general manager of that place, last year was asked, that's Dario right there, was asked by someone that was with me, um, how much would it cost to do the Revenant, which you, you guys are familiar with, how much would it cost the Revenant to do by hand? Dario's answer was very concise and, and, and very short. He said 10 times and not as good. <laughs> nice, true. And that's true, the because it's perfect. The right. partnership we built with uh, Bottega Giovanelli was uh, something very unbelievable for us.